If I say space, what is it that you think about? Usually the first answer is rockets and astronauts. And of course that's all super exciting, particularly with the forthcoming return to the moon. In the next couple of years, the Artemis mission that NASA is leading and that Australia has some really important robotics and communications contributions to. Why space matters? Particularly if we have so many issues on Earth to deal with, so many issues in Australia, most people will say, I'd rather fix the housing crisis or deal with bushfires than invest in space. To which my answer is, but did you know how many times today you've used space? Your telecommunications are dependent on satellites. Your TV broadcasting has been dependent on satellites for decades, since the 1970s and 1980s. Your internet is dependent on satellites more and more. Uh, I used an Uber to get here and he used GPS to get me here. So civil aviation, I flew from Canada just a couple of weeks ago and I flew down from Canberra this morning. So the same goes for global shipping and it supports glo a global economy in terms of trade and shipping. Remote health, every time you buy a coffee by waving your watch or your phone or your card over something, that is dependent on what's called position, navigation and timing satellites or PNT. But it's the timing aspect which is so critical both for those kinds of payments and for the global financial system. The stock market is down to millisecond movements. Weather, when you're deciding what to wear by checking the weather, this is clearly from Canada and not from Australia, 50% of our climate data comes from satellites globally. And some of that data can come from nowhere but satellites. So our ability to deal with climate change depends on Earth observation satellites. The same goes, of course, for bushfires, uh, and particularly the ability to track in real time and provide information to firefighters, but also the ability to predict uh, and therefore mitigate ahead of time. Uh, farming and agriculture, that is how farmers and the agri-tech sector today is able to do precision sowing, crop management, irrigation, fertilisation. That helps them become economically competitive, but it's also critical for their ability to have climate uh, resistant crops and, and to deal with food security. Search and rescue dependent on PNT. This is an image from a commercial earth observation company. It's an image from Indonesia on the left, 2018. On the right, deforestation just one year later. So Earth Observation is providing us with much more accurate, usable information about what's happening on the ground. Of course, being able to track for maritime domain awareness. This is an image from European Space Agency. This is tracking plastic pollution through ocean currents. And then all of those applications that I've just mentioned have military applications. Some of them were developed through the military. Modern militaries today cannot operate without space-based capabilities. So space matters. It matters every single day. Space is, is it permeating our lives. One of my key aims is to depoliticize. Investment in space has become highly politicised in Australia and I would have, last year I certainly said I think we might be the only developed country in the world where space has become a partisan issue rather than a bipartisan issue. But the problem I think is that because we don't have a national space policy, because we haven't identified why these space capabilities and technologies are so critical to so many of our national needs, it became a purely political decision. Uh, in particular, the cancellation of the National Space Mission for Earth Observation. There was a commitment for us to have a National Space Mission for Earth Observation, three satellites, a small constellation of three satellites owned by Australia, so that all the amazing things that we need Earth Observation for can be ours. Um, and so that we could contribute to the region. At least that's the opportunity, that is not the message that was given. Uh, it was cancelled uh, last year in, the, in the, uh, the, the current government's most recent budget. So a lot of people have said, oh, well, the, the problem was it was a Liberal coalition government commitment the prior, the prior year, $1.2 billion. However, turns out, the um, original plan for a National Earth Observation Space Infrastructure Plan, or the NEOS IP, was a Rudd government era commitment. So there was a request to GA and, and Bureau of Meteorology to prepare this plan. They looked at the economics, they detailed how we use all of this data. Again, GA, GA and Bureau of Meteorology are absolutely critical agencies in this. In 2013, there was a plan and a budget put in place. In 2020, we had a bushfire earth observation task force. So again, CSIRO, GA and Bureau of Meteorology, these are the, the, the suspects who keep returning. Um, uh, and then in 2022, the coalition government um, uh, committed $1.16 billion to um, the first phase of a national space mission for Earth observation to design, build and operate four satellites. Forgive me, I said three before. That's a significant 
chunk of an Australian budget. And last year, that whole plan was cancelled with an explicit justification of budget repair. Now, I have absolutely no doubt we needed to do budget repair, and I don't envy the current government's um, challenge in that respect, but <laughs> we were left with big questions, and it became highly, highly politicised. The industry started to say, this government doesn't care about the space industry. There was some literal finger-pointing towards Minister Husick, who is obviously the Minister for Industry and Science, under whom the space agency falls. And so it became a bit of a personal fight. Uh, and he has continued to kind of shut things down in a politicised way. And I don't mean to say that as a finger pointing at him again, but this is the response in the face of politicising decisions about investment into uh, space capabilities. We've had some really horrific Senate estimates. We've had some horrific comments across the aisles. And we've had some god awful comments coming out of the space sector. It's been entirely detrimental to where we need to get as a nation. OK, this decision's been made. Fine, but let's look at what the risks are. So this is a NASA image of uh, the 2020 bushfires. So not only the hotspots of the fires, but also that's smoke, that's not cloud. So being able to track the impacts of that, of course, for our neighbours. So was an investment of $1.2 billion, Earth observation data brings $1.3 billion into our GDP for all of the ways on which we depend upon it. Our government spends $100 million per year on purchasing that data because most of our data comes from uh, Japan, European Space Agency and the US, but increasingly it comes from commercial providers. And, and on top of that, there's all sorts of infrastructure. So we get, so the, the narrative was we get this data for free or we can buy it. Well, yes, but let's figure out the cost of buying it versus the cost over time of having that infrastructure ourselves. Uh, and also, there are big data risks in buying that from commercial entities um, because we don't have any way of validating the data nor of knowing whether they have calibrated their instrumentation. And we also don't know whether the commercial company that um, that took the images that provides the data is the same company that has processed and sold us the data. There might be more than one entity. We don't know if that has been interfered with. <laughs> there are also data risks if we are, so the, the, the data that we don't have to pay for directly from our government partners, we pay for in other ways with our ground infrastructure. A GA and CSIRO has ground sensors where we work with Indigenous communities to manage that. And this is nowhere near as exciting to look at as a rocket launch. But what it's providing is critical to you and I every single day, to our national needs, to our community, to our economy, and to our military. We don't have that guarantee when it's commercial. We, we provide that infrastructure in return for so-called free data from our government, uh, foreign government partners, but we've invested in that infrastructure. That has cost us money too, and continues to cost us money. So that has to be factored into the cost-saving benefit of, do we do it ourselves? Do we get it in return from these partnerships? If the US, for example, might find itself in the face of a natural disaster or an um, a adversarial situation, it's going to pri prioritise its own needs. And there are political risks. If the US were suddenly to say, actually, we're going to sell off what was government infrastructure and privatise it, we now have to deal with that company because we were depending on that government partnership. So those risks have to be passed through. There's actually a report coming out written by Symbios, uh, which I will be making much noise about when it comes out, which goes into a very deep risk analysis um, to demonstrate to our government what those data risks are and what the impact is on various sectors. So what was that $1.2 billion for? That's not what four satellites cost. You can buy four satellites from a commercial company, make it sovereign, and it costs you a few hundred million. We could just do that, but we wanted to do something long lasting and we wanted to do something a bit fancy. This was gonna have onboard calibration instrumentation. So the satellites could calibrate to each other and calibrate other people's satellites on top of the ground sensor calibration. That's pretty super duper fancy stuff. No one else is really doing it yet, it's being looked at. But we were gonna do something really great and be able to contribute calibration into the global Earth observation infrastructure and be a contributor into those global needs. We were gonna become a bit more of a um, hefty player in that geopolitical and economic space space. Um, there was also data management. I mentioned GA manages the data for the Copernicus um, Earth Observation Program. A lot of data management uh, was built into that $1.2 billion. But calibration validation or CalVal and data management, again, doesn't sound so exciting, so it wasn't part of the messaging, but nor was part of the messaging bushfires, floods, regional security. The messaging was satellites spend money. They kind of didn't come down to what we need.
We need to think more about space as part of who we are. What are our critical needs? What can we afford as a nation? We don't have a budget like some other nations do, but we can decide what needs to be sovereign, built or bought, what can be purchased, either the infrastructure that then becomes our own or the data, what can we do in partnership and what can we contribute globally. We're really, really good at ground. Funnily enough, Australia is good at Earth. <laughs> we're good at ground, we're good at, you know, our geography is amazing for the ground sensor stuff, and we're really, really good at data management. So I assert that our key priorities for capability investment should be space situational awareness, which is looking up to track stuff in space, communications, satellite based communications, and we do have a rather large budget in defense to build a three satellite constellation for advanced communications. We also have what's called a, an optical ground station built at ANU and another one in Western Australia. Basically, that's laser communications, which are 10 times the speed of current satellite communications and pretty much unhackable. Um, and if you had a network of these ground stations around the region, which Australia supports to build, you have a regional secure communications infrastructure. And the other one, as you might glean from everything I've been saying, is Earth observation, CalVal data management, that kind of thing. I did want to do a quick plug for a couple of things. We have some really key capabilities at the ANU, Institute for Space, so that ground station I mentioned. We have some Earth observation missions. That particular instrumentation I mentioned about being tailored for eucalypt forests is coming out of ANU. Uh, and Mass Change is a NASA climate, um, uh, Earth observation climate data mission, which we, we support. The Australian Centre for Space Governance is a governance capability. It's a knowledge capability rather than a technical capability. And we are serving all of the things that I've been talking about today. And the other thing very quickly is um, a group of us across the country have been working quite hard to launch something called the Australian Space Diversity Alliance. And that is really about technical workforce, STEM workforce is an issue across many sectors. Um, the only way we're going to solve this is through diversity. And it turns out diverse workforces are more innovative and um, competitive anyway. So that's what we're all about.